Pokemon Red is a really, really special game to me. I love this game so much. So it came out in Japan in 1996. And it was uh, over two years later. It was over two years until it finally came out in the US. Now when it did come out in Japan, it was, you know, it was just as popular as it, as it ended up being here. It was insanely popular. You know, kids loved it. People just went crazy for Pokemon. Um, and I remember reading about it in, uh, I think it was Nintendo Power Magazine, about this new game, Game Boy game that came out in, uh, in Japan about how it was coming to the US. And uh, I remember being really excited about it before anybody, before almost anyone in the US knew about it. I ended up, uh, so it was 1998. I was, uh, I was in high school, at the end of high school. And I remember uh, the day it came out in stores, uh, my good friend and I, I had a good friend, all we did was talk about video games all day, every day. Uh, we hopped in my, in my car and drove to Toys R Us uh, as soon as school got out. And uh, yeah, I went to look, <laughs> we went to Toys R Us, looked for it on the shelf, but it wasn't there. And so we walked back up to the front of the store and, uh, you know, held it, found a clerk and held up the, the Toys R Us flyer and said, there's, there's, there's supposed to be Pokemon here, but there's no Pokemon on the, on the shelf. Do you have Pokemon? We want to buy Pokemon. And he was like, oh, I'll go check the back. And he, <laughs> he came back with uh, uh, a box for Pokemon Red and a box for Pokemon Blue. I took the Pokemon Red box and uh, yeah. But yeah, that was, my, uh, that was when I started playing. Um, <laughs> I loved it. Uh, before, uh, what did I do? I loved it so much. I ended up, uh, so I made my own t-shirt. Before there was any merchandise available, I got a, uh, I got a white t-shirt and got that iron, iron stuff and, uh, ironing stuff and printed out my own, my own Pokemon, uh, pictures and ironed them onto the t-shirt and wore that to school. I looked really cool. Trust me. Uh, I loved it. And, uh, and then before, uh, before the music, before any like music albums came out or anything. I wanted to have the music to listen to, so I would, uh, what did I do? Oh, the, the anime, the Pokemon TV show. Ah, oh, I loved watching that, but it was only on when I was like going to school. And so I would record it every day and I copied the poker rap music onto a, a audio cassette tape so I could listen to it in the car. And uh, that's actually, I, I remade that version that I used to have and posted that on my YouTube channel. It's really fun to listen to. Uh, what else did I do? I ended up, uh, I ended up, uh, well, I don't know, I, I played through the whole game, of course, at least, well, I've played through this game at least three times, four, maybe, maybe four, maybe five times on my original cartridge. Um, every, every few years, I'll think to myself, man, is this game like, I remember loving this game. I remember something being special about this game. But is it really as special as I remember it being? And I'm always worried the answer is going to be no. And then I play for like, I don't know, 10 minutes and realize, holy crap. <laughs> There's something really, really special about this game. Uh, I hope to be able to put that into words. Uh, I'm not convinced I'll be able to put it into words successfully. You know, ob objectively. Uh, without just a bunch of, uh, you know, of course there's a lot of, uh, even though it wasn't my childhood, I was kind of old by the time it came out, it's still going to be a lot of nostalgia. But I think there's good reason, good reason why it's not just nostalgia. So just a little more background about my, about my history with Pokemon. I did, uh, so I've played through, obviously I've played through the first generation, Pokemon Red. I played all the way through the second generation, um, Pokemon Silver. I played through the fifth generation, Pokemon Black. And I've played through, what was it, the eighth generation, Pokemon Sword. Uh, Pokemon Sword is fascinating. <sighs> I, I really don't, I really think it's a, there, there's a lot in it that's very, very, very poorly, poorly made or poorly designed. But gosh darn it, I still, had so much fun with it. Like I, I got angry at myself for how much fun I still had with Pokemon Sword. But that's uh, that's not relevant to this review. 
Uh, I truly think there is something special about Pokemon Red. Now, I've heard it said online that uh, Pokemon Red, the first generation, first generation of Pokemon is broken, or that there are tons of bugs in it. Uh, I don't doubt that, but at the same time, <laughs> I, I don't care. Uh, or to put it another way, like, <laughs> the game was... Is, so I've never, I've never experienced uh, bugs or, uh, or game breaking while playing it multiple times through. Uh, at least not that I've noticed or cared about. I don't know. And it's obviously uh, good enough and fun enough for millions and millions of kids, of people, uh, throughout the world to, and to have launched this entire, entire franchise, this entire you know, set of games. So the developers did an absolutely incredible job of creating this world, this world of Pokemon, this world where there is, uh, you know, towns and villages and uh, these creatures, um, your family, your friends, uh, businesses, shops, oh my gosh, rivals, um, companies, TV stations, uh, transportation. Uh, fields, forests, underground passageways. There's just so much going on, and it all feels so alive. Um, they presented this world and in, in a way that makes the player really, really want to dive in and explore more. And almost right from the beginning, uh, the game uh, presents the player with not just one goal, you know, it's not just uh, beat the boss. There's, as in, in, in many games, there is um, become, po like, almost right from the beginning, from the opening dialogue, there's, uh, uh, you're informed you're going to have uh, big adventures. You are leaving your house for the first time and with the goal to, ultimate goal of becoming a Pokemon master. You are quickly introduced to a rival, your little other kid in town, who uh, who has the same goal as you. So you know you'll have friends with the other you know friends in the in real life who have this game who will be trying to become a Pokemon master. You also got this kid in the game who's trying to become a Pokemon master who will battle you. It's kind of it's clever. Even if you never uh, battle with someone else, you'll battle with him. So you want to beat him. Uh, there's the challenge. You're introduced with the challenge from uh, Professor Oak to fill up the Pokedex, to learn as much as you can about all the Pokemon in the world. Um, there's the, you could have the goal of uh, leveling up your Pokemon. Even if you've beat beat the game, uh, you can still have the goal of uh, leveling up your Pokemon. I, I I just kept playing until I leveled them all up until level 100, and had fun doing that. There is the goal of finding legendary Pokemon of uh, replaying the game and trying to get more, or meeting with other friends and trying to get uh, legendary Pokemon, or... or... Uh, yeah, there's a... Um, there can be the goal of exploring the whole world. There are... <laughs> there's uh, optional optional places, places... like, I, what is it, the... Uh, the electric company. The uh, like power plant, sorry. The power plant later in the game. I know I've explored it before. I think on uh, my most recent playthroughs, I just keep missing it. Like, it's that optional. It doesn't even, you don't even have to go there. There's entire segments of the Safari Zone that are optional. The point is, this game is so big and there's so much to do in it. And it's all packed into a little Game Boy game. And I think that's really important that it was for Game Boy. You know, this game came out when the, so the NES of course was out, the Super NES, Super Nintendo was out, the Nintendo 64 was out, but it really, this game really did, it needed to be on the Game Boy. The whole idea of being able to uh, trade with friends, as far as I know, couldn't be done, or at least couldn't easily be done on any other, on a home console. So the game, it was really suited for the Game Boy. Also, from kind of an emotional standpoint, it's neat that you can, neat that you can, uh, <laughs> I don't know, stick your Game Boy in your pocket and take your Pokemon with you. And uh, turn it on and whenever, whenever you have a, some free time and train up, maybe try to collect some. 
wherever you are at the, t at the moment. Now even though the game presents you with this huge world to explore and uh, to explore, um, a lot of it, it's really clever, a lot of it is uh, is kind of an illusion. Like it, they tricked the player. So I remember, uh, so you start off in your hometown and you spend, the game does a neat job of, uh, you spend quite a bit of time in your hometown before you, you finally set off on your adventure. And it was quite some time before I realized, wait a minute, my hometown is literally three houses. There's my house, my rival's house, and then Professor Oak's laboratory. But because, uh, because of the, I don't know, because of the restrictions of the Game Boy screen, you know, it's zoomed in, so you don't see everything at once. And because uh, all the people there, the dialogue there, and the way the game uh, well, the way the designers had the player, uh, like the way the gameplay develops, it really feels a lot bigger than it is. And then, and then as soon as you leave your hometown, you, you go on a little quest for the professor, Professor Oak, and you have to uh, you travel all the way to the next town, which in reality isn't that far away, but it feels it's your first big adventure out, so it feels like grander than it is. And then you work your way back home, and. Uh, so, and, uh, and then the, 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 then you start off on the real adventure after that. Even that is really clever, how the, uh, the developers give you uh, some time to, what is it, to train your Pokemon that you just got, to, you know, really grow with them, like just that Pokemon to begin with, before, you, before you're even allowed to get Pokeballs and start collecting other Pokemon. You just, uh, you just got that one. So that was a clever idea. And the flowers dance, and there's gardens, and there's, I don't know, random people walking around, visiting the town, and there's the pond, and it all just feels so big and alive. Bigger, oh, it feels so, so much bigger than, uh, than what it really is. It's really, really well designed. And... Oh my gosh, and then it gets even bigger. Holy cow, so, then you've got the, um, you've got your hometown. You've got the neighboring villages. You eventually end up in a, uh, a, a like a, a bustling city with tons of shops and skyscrapers and companies. There is, uh, well, I mentioned the power plant. There is a uh, the Pokemon Cemetery. There, there's so much in this game. There is the cruise ship uh, little episode that goes on. There is the Safari Zone, where you, whatever, Safari Zone. There is uh, island cities, island villages. Um, I can't remember if this game has fishing. I don't think it has fishing. Well, regardless, even if it doesn't, you still uh, go swimming in the water and try to catch water Pokemon. There is, there's just, the point is, there's just so much going on. Like every time I replay this game, replay through this game, I'm reminded of just how much there is going on in it. And it absolutely blows my mind. Like I can't even remember all. And this was all from the very first game. It blows my mind. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot. And then there's Team Rocket. I mean, so you got the, uh, the you know, the Pokemon Mafia. Are out trying to capture people's Pokemon. It's a whole other uh, side of the story that, uh, you know, another reason the player wants to play through stop the bad guys. <laughs> of course, that, and that involves, uh, that includes the, uh, the gambling center. Once again, there's just so much going on in this game. In addition to all the stuff that happens and all the stuff you can experience, there is also the. Um, there's so much customization. The customization in this game is incredible. I mean, compared to a game like, so Tetris or Super Mario Brothers, uh, Tetris, for example, have no customization. Um, Tetris for Game Boy. A game like Super Mario Brothers, you could play different ways. I don't know, maybe get power-ups, don't get power-ups. Run, don't run, collect all the coins. Um, Unlike those games, Pokemon has an absolutely insane amount of customization. There is 
which Pokemons you can you've uh, seen, which Pokemons you've collected, which Pokemon you keep in your party, uh, the levels of the Pokemon, uh, the moves that they have, the order of the moves, the names you give the Pokemon. There is uh, even different Pokemon that are of the same level, will have different stats depending on how you've traded them or where you collected them, how you've how you've uh, like leveled up. There's you know optional areas to explore. Just an absolutely massive amount of customization, and it's all just another, just more stuff that makes this game really feel like yours. <laughs> One of the most clever things that the uh, developers did was, uh, you know, so one of the main goals, the main goal, I think, for most people is to become a Pokemon Master and to uh, to go to the uh, headquarters of the Elite Four and, uh, you know, after you beat them, you become a Pokemon Master yourself. And one of the most clever things the developers did was they actually introduced you to, uh, to that area at the very very beginning of the game like you walk right past it and you can actually go explore that area of course you can't get too far because uh, actually I think you can enter you can enter the building but they just say this place is reserved for people that have collected all the badges that have fought have traveled to travel to the country and and uh, battled their way to the top and uh, it's such a great incentive to show the player where they'll be going where their goal is it, it's another uh, yeah, another incentive to make them want to play through the game. Like, I want to go here. <laughs> my absolute... My favorite experience in this game... I don't think I've ever seen anyone talk about it. My favorite experience in this game... So the map is... Is quite large. Like, this is a big game. Compared to other RPGs, it's probably... Probably average for the time. But, uh, I don't know, for a Game Boy game... And just in general, it's a... It's a large map. You spend a lot of time exploring. You go back and forth between cities sometimes. You have to take alternate routes to get where you need to go. Underground secret passages. Uh, exploring. I mean, you, I might spend an entire session just trying to find my way around one city because it's so big. And, uh, you know, this all started back when you're just a 10 year old kid leaving your home for the first time out to uh, try to become a Pokemon master. And so you're exploring this world, you explore mountains, uh, the seaside, uh, faraway villages, cities, smaller towns, and uh, after being away for, well, I mean, the gameplay, it's hours and hours, but in the game it feels like, I don't know, weeks, maybe months, uh, you get to, I as a player, <laughs> like, it takes, it's such a big game, I kind of forget where it all started. And so you're playing, and the way the game guides you around the map, uh, you're exploring this... Uh, one of the last places you explore is an island, and you get the one of the last badges, and you leave the island and continue exploring, and the way the water is laid out is it leads you, it guides you into this... this uh, it guides you into a, like a pond, and when you step out of the pond, it wasn't until I stepped out that I realized, like, it's the pond right next to my house where I started the game. And that just blew my mind. I thought it was so clever. I traveled the whole world, and I'm just one step away from becoming a, the, meeting my goal of becoming a Pokemon Master. That was such a great experience. So as much as I love this game, <laughs> I think I only have I think I only have one uh, one complaint about uh, well it's actually about Pokemon in general and it's kind of a silly little complaint. Um, it's really minor. So as I mentioned, the music in these games is all really good, uh, including the battle music. Now when you're starting off and uh, you get attacked by your first wild Pokemon and it's really exciting, you want to start your journey. The music is intense, and you get your first couple Pokemon. That's awesome. You continue on, you find uh, stronger Pokemon, exciting battles. You find legendary Pokemon, exciting battles, and try to catch them. Uh, eventually, it comes a point in the game where you're exploring areas that you've kind of been in before. You've got a, whatever, level 55 Charizard, and you get attacked by a, 
a level level three Pidgey, and the music, the music is just way too intense, way too intense for uh, that kind of battle. Um, so I think the only thing I would recommend for uh, this game and the, and the Pokemon series in general is having a uh, having like a uh, var variable music, depending on uh, the you know how dangerous the battle is or how intense the battle is. Maybe some nice casual battle music when you're fighting that level three Pidgey. Oh man. In my opinion, this game uh, very much holds up and is still super enjoyable to play. Uh, the graphics are cute and clear, yeah, even though they are grayscale. Uh, the music is great. The gameplay is iconic. Uh, the game is not weighed down by outdated mechanics or anything. It's still perfectly playable. It's just a big, fun, classic adventure. The game presents a, a huge living world to the player. Uh, the developers did an excellent job of making the player want to explore it. The game is full of details and customizations. It's challenging, but never really hard. And, in my opinion, most incredibly, what really makes this, I don't know, at least stand out at the time was that the developers were able to nail all this, absolutely nail it on the very first game, the very first try. So yeah, if you've never played the uh, Pokemon first gen on uh, original Game Boy, I recommend it. It's a lot of fun. <laughs>